gangsters, what's up guys? Right, so a lot of you have asked me about Gen 5 torque model stuff, how do I deal with it, and to go a little more in depth using data logs, um, in terms of what it all does and how to understand it and what it's gonna look like and what the potential problems can be. There's several videos out there on how to deal with it and how to modify things. I've made several videos on how to do it. Matt Sanford has great resources about it online. But today we're gonna go through a data log and a tune file. I'm gonna kind of show you the ins and outs and kind of some of my thoughts and opinions on the whole deal and what you need to look out for. So yeah, here we go. Okay guys, let's get started. You can see here I was working with a Terminator X deal. Um, but we're gonna, what we're gonna be looking at today is a tune file from a 2015 um, Escalade 6.2 that a guy did a DoD Elite and like a stage two-ish uh, camshaft on um, and asked me to help him remote tune it. Um, and then I've also got a 2015 Escalade 6.2 file in the background. So um, this is not gonna be a base file video. We're only gonna be talking about uh, virtual torque and the torque model um, and what that looks like. So if you've watched you know, my Gen 5 uh, cam video, then you know how to kind of set everything up um, in terms of how to get to kind of that point. So uh, when it comes to, and I am using the HP Tuner's beta version, that's how I'm able to edit uh, the virtual torque in, in my setup. Um, but we're gonna have our virtual torque stuff here. And you know, right off the bat, when you add a camshaft, the best way to do it, I think, is to come in here um, and to, um, let's see here. Yeah, the best way to do it is to come in here and remove you know 25%, 20%, different people will tell you different things. You're really focused on this intake cam angle of zero right here, sorry. So what you can do, um, and like Matt Sanford does a good job of uh, doing this in his, uh, his videos, but we've got our, our air mass and our map, and I'll show you in the, the tune file or the data log how to identify this, but we're usually gonna be somewhere between uh, 10 degrees of spark and 20 degrees of timing. So, and you're usually gonna be somewhere in this range right here, this uh, 0.2, 0.3 air mass. This is in, uh, is it milligrams? Yeah, I believe it's milligrams. Um, you know, and so in your data log, you're gonna wanna be seeing zero as your, your you know, zero pedal engine torque. So what you typically have to do is come in here in this, you know, 10, between 10 and 20, because you're gonna be oscillating between here and you will want to make these numbers more negative. So we're working in pound feet. So you might subtract, you know, 20 pound feet. And then up top, you might add, you know, 20 pound feet, something like this. And then you would do, make sure your link selections are taken care of, interpolate something like this, and then blend them uh, this way. So, and then you would extrapolate the tables. You can look at the, the tables and see that they're not all jagged and messed up. I'm gonna undo this because I don't wanna edit this file. Um, a quicker way, uh, like I've showed you uh, before, is to, um, would you like to use, no, I do not, um, is to just come in here to your uh, air-based uh, air mass coefficient A, and you would come in here to a 500 to 900, and you can do all the intake cam angles if you want for uniformity. But what you would do is come in here and just type in 0.75, multiply this, and be off to the races. And for a for a startup file, that's going to be perfectly fine. Um, you know, uh, so you would do that. Um, I've obviously made some other edits to the torque models and fine adjustments, but that's how I've taught you to do it before. Under torque management, uh, your peak torque. Um, these are the adjusted tables. So this is not a table that you want to abuse. Um, these other limits, you can max these out uh, perfectly fine. You're not gonna have any issues. Um, with this one, you're kind of having to uh, guess and use your past experience to decide how much more torque the engine's gonna make. This camshaft, I felt like it was potentially going to make another 100 foot-pounds of torque. I did not edit anything down here, okay? This is the table that I think you can be a little more off with. Um, as opposed to what we just talked about, the virtual torque tables, and what we're getting ready to talk about, which is driver demand. So I opted, you can see here, it looks like I added 100 foot-pounds from 2,500 and above, and then I just kind of blended it. What a lot of people will tell you to do is come in here and just do like a 20% gain, and that's gonna be, you know, just uh, fine. It's gonna, you know, it's just gonna be a much simpler process. It's really up to you. Um, you know, obviously you don't wanna max this out. You don't want to be a high horsepower car and this table is unedited. You can't really do that, you know, but you also don't want to come in here and inflate this with another 100 foot pounds of torque when you know that your combination is not going to make that. Um, 
you know, so that's that. The other one is driver demand. Um, so typically you're going to be in map A, uh, but we, I, I like to edit all of them just, just in case. Um, this is a table not to be abused either. Really what you're more concerned with um, is these, these full throttle uh, regions down here. And just briefly to go back to virtual torque, when it comes to the virtual torque table tables, really the only spots that you're editing is the idle range and then what you're doing up top, okay? So, and you can extend this out, especially if you're making, you can change your max to what would be 1.8 grams, and it gives you more resolution in your table. So if we shoot down here, there again, yeah, here's our, you know, at 10 degrees of spark timing, this is what the values are, and then, you know, and then 20, and then everything's gonna fall somewhat, somewhere in between here. So this region right here, is where you're gonna spend, I would say this block from zero to 400 and then from 500 to 1200 RPM is where you're gonna spend the majority of your time, okay? Um, you're always gonna have torque management trying to kick in a little bit. That's just how the ECM's logic works. Where you don't wanna see torque management kicking in is going to be um, at wide open throttle. We're gonna show, I'm gonna show you that here in a second, okay? You know, but typically if you are a really high horsepower car, you know, or you're you're making wide open throttle adjustments. If you're over estimating the torque that you're making here, you may have to bring it down because it will actually decrease the spark timing. And I'll show you what that's going to look like. Okay, not to go off on a tangent here. I'm trying to go in order. Uh, but driver demand typically when we do one of these base files, you know, for a cam, you would do a 1.15 multiply, and then you would just kind of blend something like this, and that would be sufficient. You would not want to copy this table to the others. You would want to do that same change to the others. Anything down here, there's really no point in trying to, you know, pedal accelerate the, the, the deal. You seem to leave that like it is, especially these negative numbers. Don't come in here and edit this stuff. I mean, if the vehicle makes power, you're going to tune it, adjust your fuel trims, dial in your timing, and, and, and it's gonna make power, and the pedal's gonna be responsive, especially if you have you know converter and gears and all that stuff, you don't weigh a million pounds, but otherwise it just is what it is, okay? So that's gonna be driver demand. When your driver demand tables are off, you're going to see the throttle close, okay? If the vehicle is making more torque than what you are requesting, which is through the driver demand tables, then it's going to uh, freak out and it's gonna shut the throttle blade. So if we go over here to a data log of this vehicle, um, as always with dialing this stuff in, you want to make sure that you are at uh, running temperature. Um, I am tuning this uh, in the blended mode, um, and I'm using the filters for mass airflow. Um, I'm using my long-term and short-term fuel trims, and I've got my so hits required. This is a little bit longer of a data log, so I, I didn't um, have any issue with, with using my cell, and I'll even drop these cell hits required down to like 50 so that you can see um, kind of where we're at. Um, again, dialing in stuff like virtual torque, um, you know, and the, the, the throttle blade, making sure it's not closing. Um, you probably want to make sure that your fuel trims are, are, are dialed in uh, before, you know, before you really start going making any large changes. Um, the virtual volumetric efficiency, I am using a math parameter, um, and I've got, looks like 75 hits. We'll make these 50 hits on here as well, so you can kind of see. Um, we had several data logs exchanged between this vehicle. It had some mechanical issues and some various things, and we were just trying to dial in the transmission and stuff. So a little lean here, could have probably added a little bit more fuel, but it's still within 10%, pretty good. Same thing with the, the mass airflow curve, um, you know, pretty close. So you can see here, um, I'm logging just all that I need for this video. Um, so you can see here, um, you know, our zero pedal engine torque is around, around 19, 30, 20, somewhere around there. So it probably needs to come down just a hair. Uh, again, I was kind of at the same time, you know, was trying to get this thing dialed in and the, yeah, I was adjusting some fuel trims at the same time, uh, you know, just trying to, trying to get it done more or less. So could have done a little bit more massaging there. Um, but what I really want to show you, and you can see here if I kind of zoom out, while you're idling, you know, you're going to see the torque management here in orange. This is going to be kicking in and doing what it's supposed to do. 
Um, especially on your gear changes, you're going to see torque management kicking in there as well. Let me see if I can... What am I doing here? Try to find this spot right here. Okay. So we've got our throttle position in purple. So, so you'll notice right here, okay, so you've got torque management kicking in. Notice our spark is in green. When the spark drops and the torque management kicks in and it makes this little figure right here, that's your gear change right there. Okay, that, that's gonna be your gear change. Um, so we've got speed and green. Okay, so you can see here as he's laying into the throttle, notice there's no orange. So that means that um, our torque model is gonna be okay. And for a cam of this size, you need to adjust the idle area and honestly, if you're not getting any torque management, if you were getting these little orange spikes in here, then you would need to go back and adjust those areas. You know, if it's saying, you know, if we go back to torque management, and, and again, coming in here and removing 20% out of this is what you would do like the first time. This is a large change. From there, you would come into the virtual torque table and you would kind of see, you would want to see where you're at. So we need to move the resolution up some, just a little, let's go to 1600. I don't want to make it too big, okay? But obviously, you know, if you were, say you were getting some orange blips in here at 22 degrees of timing, you would need to see cylinder air mass is 0.62. So, Let's see, where we at, where we at, where we at? Yeah, so 0.6, okay, and then we were at what, 24, you know, something like that. So we're somewhere in this range. You know, if the numbers are super inflated, um, you would need to bring those down, so decrease them. If you're making a lot more torque than, uh, than it's saying, if it's saying 292 and you've got a big, big combination, then you may have to raise them. The big thing is that you also don't want to come in here and have things that look like this, okay? You see a lot of people griping on the internet, you know, other tuners about virtual torque tables that look like this. You know, even if you come in here and like you smooth it and you try to do stuff like this, it still is gonna look, whoops, whatever. It's still gonna, there's no way, it's kind of like a fuel table you would never have a fuel table that looks like this. So you're probably not going to have a virtual torque table where it makes power down low and then not in the middle and then up top. It's just kind of unorthodox. So um, what changes you make to this, you need to make very, very lightly. Um, you know, now on the contrary, say we were in here, notice that our throttle is open 90%, okay? Timing's 22 and a half degrees, okay? Um, if we were seeing that the throttle, and if we were, and we can come in here and we can add accelerator pedal. Let's make this uh, red. Yeah, so if we came in here, um, and we saw that the, now we can see here that the accelerator pedal is at 42%. The throttle is open 89%. That's not bad. Um, but what we would want to make sure is that this throttle opening doesn't do this big V-shaped thing. Okay, so meaning that if, you know, uh, this just means that the throttle is open more than the accelerator pedal just based on the, the, the OEM, you know, throttle follower programming, which is fine. Um, but what we wouldn't want to see is a big jagged V in here. That would mean that you would need to go in to your driver demand tables and you would need to raise these another 8%, 10%. You know, um, on a cam like this, you're probably gonna add 15%. It's probably a good starting point. Again, you can be a little bit off in left field and it's gonna be okay. Where it comes into play is when you have a really big combination, something with a supercharger or a turbocharger um, or a stroker motor where you really have to crank it up like 25, 30, 35% to make sure that you're not getting blade closure. So that's just something to, to consider. Um, again, some of you guys have been asking about what does it look like and just to be a little more in depth, you know, because sometimes what'll happen is you'll come in here 
And you'll go to your torque model and you'll rip, you know, 25% out or you'll actually use the virtual torque tables and you'll follow, you know, like what Matt Sanford or uh, a couple of the other guys on the internet are talking about, um, you know, and then you're, it's, you're still in the negative. Um, and I can probably tell you by looking at this that these aren't low enough. So I would probably come in here and go another, I would probably do something like this. Um, and then here I might add 20, blend this, and then move this over like such. You know, what you're trying to avoid, again, when you make those changes is these really big, you see how it's kind of got this little lip right here? That's not terrible, but you would just want to make sure that you're going in very small increments when you make these changes. Again, the last thing you want to do is see big gnarly cuts and dips in your in your virtual torque tables so um yeah so uh this has just been kind of an overview a little more in depth of, of how to use this stuff if you guys have any uh questions uh comments or anything else you want to see related to this stuff uh, if you have any data logs or files you need me to look at and make a video on let me know and yeah we'll see you guys in the next one